Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm up here today in Scottsdale at Bear Arms taking a look at something that's not my normal specialty. This is a basically current production, magnificently engraved Walther Q5. So this is Normally we think of engraved guns as like that ye olde thing, or you know, someone took a fancy gun from the past. Well, at the time, you know, if you were buying a Tiffany engraved Colt, that was engraved brand new out of the factory. And the same thing holds true today, but I think a lot of people maybe don't consider it. So what we have here is, like I said, a Walther Q5 that has like 130 hours of hand engraving work on it. And it's really a pretty beautiful gun, as well as being a magnificent competition pistol. So let's take a closer look at it. So this comes in a very nice leather case, uh, Walther, stamped into the top. Let me open that up, and you know, it's an interesting commentary on old-style, you know, classic engraved guns. You look at this fancy case, and you're like, well, what are all these things for? Well, oh, that little slot's for the disassembly screwdriver, and this one's for a box of projectiles. Well, in this case, we have a slot in the side for your mandated trigger lock, which we don't need. They did not bother uh, engraving or embellishing that. What we do have in here, then, are three, well, two spare magazines and the pistol. And oh my goodness, this is Fantastic. So the base gun itself is a Walther Q5 match. Uh, this is, it's a steel framed gun. It is developed from, it's based on the PPQ uh, series, which was based on the P99 series from Walther. And this is just the most modern iteration with all of the competition upgrades. So it's got adjustable sights on it. It's got their really fantastic, uh, what they call a dynamic performance trigger minimal reset. In fact, one of the like the fundamental features of the P99 and its descendants, like this one, is that they use a striker system where the striker is fully cocked and pulling the trigger only releases it. Where a lot of striker-fired guns like this uh, use the first bit of trigger pull to actually finish cocking the striker. So you're tensioning the spring before the trigger releases, and that gives you a stiffer and less, less good uh, speaking of less good, uh, trigger pull, where the, the Walther design here does not. The thing's fully cocked, and the internal safety prevents it from firing uh, if dropped or anything. And then your trigger pull only has to release the striker to go forward. So the engraving on this was done by a company called Bottega Incisioni Giovanelli, which was founded in 1955. Uh, just uphill of the Val Trompia, which is in the Gardone area of Italy. This is basically the one valley where you have a whole profusion of Italian firearms companies, and companies related to uh, firearms production, like engravers. So the company was formed in '55. The, uh, the engraver who actually did this particular gun was a gentleman by the name of Dario Cortini, who started working for the company uh, when he was 14 years old, and worked has now worked there for 41 years. So I've uh, been doing this quite a while. It sounds like he started more or less sweeping the floors and learned the art of engraving. Uh, apparently the gold inlay elements were uh, were his not so much doesn't sound like a suggestion so much as his insistence. Like uh, the company, the engraving company partnered up with Walther and they apparently get along very well. And they had this project. This is called the Arabesque, by the way. And Dario Cortini did the engraving and basically came to the conclusion that this would look a lot better if we had some little gold accents to it, and told Walther so. Like, we will put gold accents in this, because it will look better. And your choice is to say okay or okay, because I'm not giving you a choice in it. Focus. In addition to the gun itself, uh, the magazines all have steel base plates that have been embellished, uh, engraved, and gold accented as well. So you get a couple of those. I will admit it's a little jarring to me to get this like super fan the magazine with this super fancy base plate and then just a standard cheap molded plastic magazine loading tool. Uh, you can see that the case is specifically designed for that magazine loader. I suppose the last bit here would be the wooden uh, wraparound grip assembly, which is very nicely checkered and it's a very nice piece of uh, wood material to start with that I think actually goes really well with this sort of uh, large 
floral style of engraving. I have to admit, one of the fundamental questions that comes up with this sort of thing is, who buys these and for what? So Walther has this as a gun that is fully functional. Like They take great pride in the fact that it's got a really good trigger in it, and it has all of the competition-style upgrades that they put into the Q5 series. Like This is a fully functional gun. And I suspect uh, the people who built it would be maybe a little disappointed if it wasn't ever actually used. Like, what's the point of doing all that work and making this such a nice gun if no one's going to shoot it? And yet, on the other hand, I suspect that the vast majority of people who purchase something like this do so with no intention of ever firing it. It is a piece of mechanical artwork to them that they will put on a shelf and appreciate, but not actually use. And I think in some ways it's a little sad. It's too bad that, uh, that the value that goes into this, the dollar value associated with it, because of the expertise and the quality and the amount of work that's required to create it, it's too bad that like the consequence of that is that it's too valuable for someone to want to risk damaging or to you know, to put wear and tear on. So it's an interesting conundrum with embellished, not just guns, but you know, custom embellished high-end mechanical art of anything like this. At any rate, it is a beautiful pistol. Uh, at some point someone is going to buy it and take it home, and I hope that they give it a very nice home. And if it were mine, I wish I could afford to buy a gun like that and then actually shoot it, because I think that's, that's uh, what everyone involved in the project would prefer. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. It's an interesting opportunity to take a look at some of the engraving sort of work that's being done right now on brand new production pistols like this one from Walther. Thanks for watching.